collaboration. Here's Pam Muncy. Of course, we're in the Art Carmichael's workshop with Steve over here. We have Cy from Cy's Corner, and we did a four-part series. The fourth part is on our channel, and the rest of the parts are in the description box below. The series starts with Tim, then it goes to Cy. Then we all kind of did the third part with Steve and his workshop, and here you're seeing part four. So we hope you all enjoy, and thank you all for watching, and we will catch you all next time. Alright, so to start off with, I gathered up a bunch of flowers. I figured a variety would be good since I wasn't exactly sure of how many flowers I was going to put together or if I was going to mix the flowers up or what have you or how the flowers were going to dry. So I just gathered a ton of flowers up. And yes, those might be Charlie's flip flops. Whatever. And since this project requires splines, this kind of required us to make a spline jig which was the first jig that we've ever made. So we just cut two sides for the jig and then two pieces for the 45s and then just glue them together using staples to hold it while the glue is drying. So here I'm checking on the flowers and I didn't really like how some of the flowers dried so I actually did a second round of flowers. And so the flowers for this project fit between two pieces of glass and then the whole assembly gets split into this dado system so we had to figure out what thickness to make the dados. And so here we're measuring two pieces of glass with some flowers in between and we're measuring kind of all four sides and trying to get some average thickness. And then Charlie ran a test piece through the data stack just to verify the thickness. And then once we verified that that data thickness was okay, we, we finished up the dados for the rest of the frames. Now we got this data stack in a couple weeks ago so it is very much new and we were both amazed with how much quieter the table saw was. We knew that our other blade was kind of on its way out and we were pushing our luck with it I guess and now that the table saw wasn't sounding or feeling so obnoxious anymore like I said we got this new data stack I figured let's do some dados so I just kind of went to town doing some dados it was pretty fun we're just going to stay on the insides oh wait you can cut the angle this way yeah and then just make one of the it can be ours do it I was paying attention though, I had the fuller up and I just didn't think about which direction to feed it. Do you have any idea how many mistakes I've made in other parts of doing stuff? It's a part of doing stuff. And so once Charlie fixed my mistake, then we glued all of the frames together. We don't have one of those super duper fancy 90 degree box clamp thing with jiggers. So instead, I found two hunks of metal in the shop that appear to be not 90 degrees or close to. So we sort of used these as the frames and glued and clamp around them. And once they were dry, we got to use our spline jig for the first time. And we used a 1 8 blade from our data stack to make these little splines. And then it was on to the bandsaw to make the insert for the spline. So we used our jointers to flatten out a piece of walnut, and then we took that flattened out section over to the bandsaw to cut the thickness. You know, I could do this. And then once we had the little triangles for the spline inserts, we started gluing them in. And once some of the splines were glued in, then I took them over to the belt sander and started sanding them down. Meanwhile, Charlie made some more splines because some of them we messed up on. <laughs> we like hammered too hard and they busted and things of that sort. So these had a little bit of a rock in them. I guess they were still a little bit wet when we took them to Carmichael's and so when they were dry and they got a little bit of a rock. And I took this over the jointer, and I tell you what, for the life of me, I could not get this thing to pass through the jointer. I was only able to use one push block thing because it was, you know, shorter, but I just could not push the sucker through. And then Charlie makes it look as easy as pie. Drives me nuts. So once they were flat, then Charlie took them to the router and did a little routering detailed number on them. You know, fancy it up a little bit. And then we didn't really have a very good way to do, I don't know if this is called a dado or a Morrison at this point, but we didn't have a very good way to do the groove that goes into the bottom of the platform, so Charlie set up two stop blocks and just sort of eased it down onto the data stack. And since then, I actually saw a video that Tommy just released a couple weeks ago, and his solution was much better. 
But anyway, right, once those grooves were done, I cleaned out the corners of them and put some boiled linseed oil on them and then left them to dry. And then, when we went to test fit the glass, we discovered that, surprise, surprise, our 90 degrees were not 90 degrees. They were a little bit off, and so that meant that the measurement of the glass needed to be changed just slightly. And then I had to make two new pieces of the glass since somebody, <coughs> Charlie, <laughs> broke two pieces of the glass. And then we pre-drilled for those screws, and that's when the batteries ran out of our camera. However, you didn't miss too much. Basically, the next two hours was me fessing up with the glass, trying to get the glass as clean as possible, lint-free, dirt-free, smudge-free, fingerprint-free, and then I added on rubber gloves. It was just like, I mean, seriously, I probably could have obsessed over cleaning this glass for much longer, but after a couple hours, I decided that it was going to be as clean as it was going to be, and I just decided I needed to accept the limitation of, of what it was and just move on with life. So here are the finished frames. I think that the whole product was so cool, and the idea of the see-through glass with size idea, I think, came out just wonderfully. I think that was a wonderful idea that she had. So I just wanted to say thank you to Tim C for doing this collaboration with us. We had a wonderful time. Make sure to go check out their videos. They are linked in the description below. And as always, we appreciate y'all for watching, and we will catch y'all next time.